here we are with Pedro Gomez. Thank you so much for joining us for the crypto native interview series with Pon. Um, so Pedro, thank you for, for joining again. We have a few questions with, uh, for you. Um, I guess my, my first question would be, what do you think defines a crypto native for you? I think the difference between a crypto native is essentially the difference between a person who speculates by buying a token and then just selling it higher and another one who actually takes full advantage of its properties. Maybe at the core definition could be someone who has used a self-custodial wallet to interact with a DApp and not just either buying it in an exchange or putting it in a wallet, but kind of just letting it sit there. So you have somehow interacted with smart contracts or any app for the purpose of not speculating. Great, amazing, perfect. So we at Pawn are targeting crypto natives, hence why we always kind of like to ask because everybody has such a kind of different answer to, to what a crypto native for them is. So I guess, uh, Pedro, as a crypto native yourself, what are some of the DeFi tools and DeFi strategies that you find yourself doing and using at the moment? It'd be great to learn a little bit more about whether that's trading, lending, borrowing, staking, um, a little bit more around uh, what you do. Oh, I would say that like I'm very boring uh, when it comes to actually DeFi. Like I, I, I am kind of in the side of like crypto is more than just DeFi. Like so DAOs, NFTs and identities are things that really excite me. But when it comes to DeFi, I think my favorite things have always been with borrowing money because you know just kind of like letting money accrue interest it's something so interesting because it was kind of just accessible to banks you know banks had like checking accounts and then they would just like take that liquidity and borrow it to other people and they would earn interest and now that's available to literally any individual like any individual with some cash that is just stacked away can earn interest by just putting in a DeFi protocol or even staking, if you want to take it to that level. Amazing. Thank you. So I guess just a quick follow-up question on the answer that you gave, but you said, you know, you're more into like maybe looking into DAOs or kind of other, other areas of crypto. And I totally agree with you. Crypto is so much more as well, like DeFi and like the financial side is just one side of it, but would love to know a little bit more around like your involvement, like in other areas of crypto, like, is it, is it DAOs that you're kind of, focusing on a lot or, or what are the things that you're kind of deeply focused on? What I what I really like about crypto uh, or like just Web3 in general, and, and that's why I kind of was, there was like always this, these folks who would say like, oh, you just renamed crypto into Web3, but it's all, it's the same thing. And I'm like, it's not really the same thing. Like I think semantics are really important. Once you call it Web3, you're, pushing away from just the cryptocurrency aspect and the cryptocurrency aspect is almost secondary. For me, Web3 and crypto is about social coordination, about people coming together through decentralized technology to an end goal. And this could be as something as artistic as NFTs. It could be as something more tangible as events who also have properties around NFTs by validating that you have a ticket, that you have attended, and maybe even accessing some special um, features that were not accessible to people who did not have that NFTs, like memberships. And then with DAOs, it's kind of taking it to a next level, which is we have kind of attributed these particular personas to have these properties and now they get to have a say around a certain topic. I think DAOs today are still very immature because there's still a lot of friction. They kind of like revolve around the idea of someone owning a certain amount of tokens. And then they evolved into not just owning, but also ability of delegating. And I would like to see in the future, almost a combination of it at at any point in time, you can just pick some conditions and DAOs are created ephemerally. It's not so rigid where you're either in a DAO or you're not, but like now we need the decision that needs to be made by someone who owns 
X NFT with certain amount of tokens and has made transactions in this period of time, therefore is relevant for this conversation. And now you kind of, there's no such thing as a DAO, but rather a ephemeral DAO for a particular proposal. So it's, it kind of happens over time. I might be part of proposal one, but then in proposal two, I didn't meet the conditions to vote on it. So it wasn't so much that I wasn't part of the DAO, but that proposal was not relevant to me. Got it. And I kind of really like how you described it as social coordination. I think that is so, so true um, in all areas of, of Web3. So, so thanks for that. Um, I guess moving on, on to the kind of next question, which is, a little bit around the main issues that crypto natives face today. So I had kind of put together this question more so on issues faced in the financial ecosystem, but it would be great to get your opinion on both angles, like the financial and the non-financial ecosystem. But what are some of the main issues facing uh, crypto natives today? And, and have you faced any of these issues and how are you mitigating these? I mean, we could, we could go so much broad like to what extent do we define an issue? Like we have like existential issues for Web3 around like how it is actually accepted by mainstream and that perspective that kind of has been tainted with like past experiences of like exchanges being hacked or scums being made. But then we have like smaller issues like uh, the user experience isn't as good as it should be and people lose money with their keys. But I think if we focus on the social coordination part, the biggest issue in my head is the idea of account management. This idea that you have three or four accounts and then maybe they're in separate wallets or in the same wallet, and then you interact with dApps and there's no correlation. I think we still haven't created a form of identity that can essentially allow you to manage multiple accounts under one identity. So you as an individual are only one person, but you can exist in different personas. So I can be Pedro as the one who wants to borrow money. And that's a completely different person from the one who wants to buy some NFTs because I like how they look, you know, uh, managing these accounts have been, has created a lot of fragmentation. And then once you actually get into gaming, that's when it really gets really hard because gaming has completely different requirements for account management than DeFi DAOs and NFTs. And right now there's literally this uh, isolation between the two worlds where he, if you actually talk to gaming companies, they are super into like custodial solutions, which is very contradictory to Web3 in my opinion, but they are reacting to the fact that the current solutions are extremely lacking for gaming. So they have to rely on custodial solutions. So where can we find the middle ground? And I think there's like two technologies that will evolve into this threshold signature schemes like TSS wallets and account abstraction with the new EIP 4337. I think these two camps eventually will mature and may even converge into what we believe is account management in the future. I think that's like the biggest problem, but I'm also biased because as being part of Wallet Connect, I care about wallets and that's kind of my specialization. And I think that's pretty much what we need to fix within the next two or three years. Got it. And I guess this kind of ties really nicely into um, the next question I had with you, which was like, I'd love you to tell our audience a little bit more about Wallet Connect's efforts to simplify Web3 UX through WalletConnect.auth. Um, would love to know a little bit more in, in the detail about that. Yeah, so we've been working so hard like for the last almost two years in Wallet Connect version two. And the version two kind of brings together so many problems that version one had and not only fixed them, but actually expanded it. We had a lot of problems in terms of performance, reliability, and just session management in general. And in order to tackle them, we ended up creating a much more modular communication protocol. In the past, we saw Wallet Connect as a way to connect wallets and sign transactions, and that was pretty much the end of the story. But now with the new approach, we actually have a much more uh, flexible structure that allows you to have almost like sub protocols on top of the big protocol. 
And this is what we kind of talk about the protocol API. So we have sign API, which is the traditional um, connecting wallet and signing transactions that everyone used to. But then we have three others that we came up, which are off, push, and chat. So kind of to touch on off first, we've seen the advent of signing with Ethereum growing very rapidly. And we're likely going to see the Web 2.5, which is, I just call it, basically all the Web 2 projects like Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, like trying to get into Web 3, but not really becoming fully Web 3. And the first touch point that they have is authenticating a wallet user. And with sign with Ethereum, you have this very simple pattern that you need to connect to a wallet and then sign a message. So we thought, why go through all of that effort and just skip the step and go and sign the message directly? So we come up with off API, which completely changes that pattern. And with a single click, you can get a sign in with Ethereum message. And then big companies like Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and others can just take that signature and validate the, that you own some assets on chain and correlate that with your digital identity on their platform. So. I think that's a, a good in between what's Web3 and Web2, the Web2.5 that off API fulfills. Got it. So super interesting what you guys are building and definitely going to look into it a little bit deeper. I guess when it comes to this, this whole topic that you're kind of mentioning, um, I'm just very keen to know a little bit more about why that identity that you have in crypto needs to be kind of correlated amongst the accounts. So like, why is that important? I guess not just to you, but why do you think it's important in the world to make sure that all of these identities are some way correlated instead of each wallet being kind of its own and having its own um, like place? Well, when you think about identity, like most people sometimes confuse identity with attestations, like truly an identity should exist either one per person or at least one variation per person that could be correlated to different contexts. And so that, like I explained, like there's only one Pedro, but then there's Pedro in DeFi, Pedro in DAO and Pedro in NFT. So essentially there's variations of Pedro depending on the context. And given each context, you might want to essentially disclose some information in the form of attestations. So sign-in with Ethereum is the most basic form of attestation that essentially, if you put it in human readable language, you're saying, I, Pedro, own this wallet address on the blockchain Ethereum. Like that's literally the attestation. So then when you authenticate yourself into, let's say Facebook, you put an email and password, and that's a form of attestation that you are authenticating yourself into your Facebook identity. And now you want to link these two together by having these two attestations connected. And that's where the signature comes. So ideally, the sign in with Ethereum would be the identity within Facebook. So you remove the email and password and that becomes your identity. And then you just correlate all the Facebook information with the sign in with Ethereum. But because obviously Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, these applications have lived for like 10 and almost 20 years, some of them, like you actually have to do it the other way around, right? So uh, the sign-in with Ethereum becomes a small attestation within the, the ocean of information that we have in these platforms rather than the other way around where the root of authentication lives at the wallet level. Got it. And that's such a great way of explaining it. Definitely, I think you could maybe write so much about this kind of topic in itself and what are the multiple possibilities, but obviously super excited of what Wallet Connect is building. Um, I guess, Pedro, on to the, the next question. I'm very keen to know, as a crypto native, what are your thoughts on the prospect of DeFi mortgages? Um, I guess at the beginning of the call, you did mention a little bit around like if it was into DeFi, you're excited by what borrowing can do and how you can just earn money essentially on the money that you've got lying there. I guess, what about the prospect of using that money and those digital assets? to buy kind of more long-term mortgages or long-term assets kind of in real life um, or even kind of obviously uh, virtual, but really keen to know what your opinion is on, on that and what, what are your thoughts are. Yeah, I think that's a great question. I, I remember once I tweeted that 
there's going to be a likely scenario where if we look into the pattern, like we have web one, which is truly decentralized by design. And then we have web two, which essentially became more interactive, but also centralized by design. And then we came back to decentralized with web three. It's very likely that web four is not going to be as decentralized as web three. Uh, and that's a problem. But I expect that then we come around and we have like Web 5 truly decentralized. And what I think it's going to happen through the Web 4, Web 5 is going to be this um, intersection between in real life assets and um, us like with decentralized identity that we have today. The biggest problem with like decentralized identity today is that we essentially are making attestations over digital assets. Like everything that you see in DID world and uh, soil sovereign identity, it's all about digital assets. It's about whether you own a file, an image, a name, a username, but then how can you actually go around and like have actual in real life physical assets associated with that digital identity? I think that's where Web4 is going to come in and we're going to see centralized entities essentially owning the registry of who owns what. And that's going to be a bit of a disappointment at first because we kind of want to see physical assets on chain, but through the centralized method. But maybe that's what Web5 eventually will offer. Like Web5 will essentially provide truly decentralized oracles. And I know like projects like Chainlink are trying to tackle decentralized oracles, but then it's really hard to put decentralized oracles over information that is owned by centralized entities. So if you look at owning a house, you have to go to the government of your jurisdiction, and then there's going to be a single entity that controls this registry, and it's the only entity that can actually decide who owns what. So even if you decentralize the oracle, which feeds the information into the blockchain like Chainlink, you still have only one single source of truth that can be corrupted. So essentially we will have this kind of para decentralization where chain link is decentralized as an input source for the blockchain, but the source from which the they consume is centralized by design. So it's still kind of centralized, but it doesn't feel decentralized. So I think we will see like web three mortgages happening in this like web three, web four generation but the true like decentralized mortgage would be when the actual ownership of the house does not live at the whatever country you live in registry but maybe through a DAO right so that would be taking it to another level where oracles are decentralized but so is the registry of digital uh, physical assets that's super interesting. And to be honest, I had kind of, I guess, to a certain extent, you know, when you think about people on board, like, you know, will everything in real life be suddenly just with a flick of a button, will it kind of come on chain? And obviously, you know, that there's going to be so many hiccups through that journey. But I guess what's really great about what you said is that I had never thought about like this web three to web four to web five because it is true like it is going to be a massive transition and you need time for that like i don't think the the world is ready right now to to take everything on chain um super super interesting um and the last question i have for you pedro to be honest i think with each of these questions i could maybe go on for at least 20 minutes each but um, I guess I'm just really interested to learn from you, like, what are you most excited in about whether it's DeFi, obviously, I know that you're obviously super excited about Wallet Connect and, and everything you just spoken about, but within DeFi or maybe even DAOs, like leading up to the next bull run, if we're not in a bull run already, obviously, given the last couple of days, but um, just really keen to know what you're excited about. I think it. It's like I, I keep mentioning, I think that everything that we're doing in some form or another, it comes down to social coordination and NFTs, DeFi and DAOs are just representations of what it looks like to do social coordination in a decentralized platform. But the number one thing we're missing is the decentralized identity component. Uh, we are we're getting so close and we're improving day by day but the decentralized identity part needs to be solved in order for us to even consider a digit, a digital or 
crypto mortgages. Like if you want to have crypto mortgages, I still need to know who you are to even give you access to X house. Is this going to come in the form of something more advanced like WorldCoin that scans your iris and that's how you access your house? Maybe, maybe not. Is this going to come as something simple as a credit card that it actually acts as your form of identity because you register into a DAO as this is my credit card or my crypto card, I guess, in the future. And then that's what's actually going to open the house. And I think that all of those components about how you authenticate who you are are essentially what makes identity the most important. Like authentication is one sector within identity, but it's the most important one. And I think wallets will have a great opportunity for that. And I think that's what always excited me to go very deep into wallets because what we had was a lot of years for 20 or even 40 years, we've been trying to deploy at scale public key cryptography and they just failed over and over again. And then one day Satoshi essentially created a blockchain that had a ledger that associated for one key, there's a certain amount of money. And all of a sudden, everyone had a private key. Now we kind of just need to leverage all of this momentum and use all of these private keys that people own that right now exist either in the form of a browser extension or a mobile app or even a ledger. But we can then have them authenticate for things that are non-financial. First, we will do it with form of like digital assets like NFTs. Then we'll start going to have some discussions with DAOs where we trade opinions and proposals and votes around your identity that you authenticate with your wallet. But then the next level is actually having physical interactions. Like we already have NFT tickets for events, but like you said, like what it would look like if you get inside of your house through a crypto key, that it's registered on chain that you own this house and therefore you're able to enter. That is, that is incredible. And to be honest, I think like what's, what's great is that you've kind of taken this at a like higher level rather than like a very niche specific thing, which is one of like 10 things that, you know, you might be looking forward to, but I really love the perspective that you bring, and I am sure that so many of our of our community members will really kind of appreciate this interview and and just kind of your your thoughts on this. So, I guess thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, do you have any kind of final thoughts or final remarks that you'd like to share? Or yeah, honestly, I I think that what I would love to see is uh, people taking their wallets more seriously. Not just because, you know, you need to take care of your seed thread and it's important to be secure, but most importantly, because you are at the beginning of what it's going to be a very different world and the wallet will be the start of it. Can we get more creative with what we build accessing through wallets? I think we're already getting there because you see uh, social media apps like based on Lens protocol or social media apps based by Farcaster protocol and even uh, Showtime and others, they're already building these experiences around the wallet identity. And then we can actually go a step further. And that's what we're trying to do with Wallet Connect by having what it will look like if we use messaging, like chatting between two users with our wallet, what it would look like if you receive mail or messages for important events directly into your wallet using your wallet identity. Having wallet identity at the core of our Web3 development is going to impact way more than just finance. And we need to get a little bit more creative in that and give wallets a little bit more credit. Amazing. And I totally agree with you. I think every story that you kind of read on Twitter or or anything around people just, I guess you take it for granted, right? Like, oh, it's just like a wallet and everything. But I think taking it more seriously is definitely like a great way to um, great message to give to the community and also a great way to end the interview. So um, Pedro, thank you so much for joining us again. I'm going to stop recording now. 